your your Twitter your bio reads that you tweet about SaaS and Bitcoin. Do you think these two worlds collide, and you get to the point where do you think a SaaS business model exists on Lightning and it becomes a, a dominant business model there, or do you think do you, do you think those are mostly just two separate um, spheres? No, I definitely think a um, like Galoy. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just mentioned they're the team behind Bitcoin Beach. They're they're basically building Bitcoin banking, banking as a service, as a right? So yeah. why like maybe they charge in Bitcoin or maybe they charge in USD? I don't think that makes them more or less a Bitcoin company. It's just a function of how they fund the business through revenues, and that that would be a su subscription business. Um, Voltage is sort of like the AWS of the Lightning Network. That'll be a subscription model. So. Yeah, I just think um, subscription revenue is nice because it's recurring. It's like naturally recurring. Only if somebody decides to churn does it not recur. But um, it's a flow of funds. It's like an annuity. And uh, that's why we just in general at Craft we are so bullish on SaaS businesses because of like how durable the revenue is. And I think 100% I think that will manifest in, in uh, Lightning and, and Bitcoin companies. What do you think some of those other business models might be on Lightning? Because I think some of it still has not been fully fleshed out yet. There's a lot of people trying new business models, seeing what sticks. Um, if, you had to, if you had to guess, do we, do we come up with new business models that have never before existed? Um, are, are any of these business models better than SaaS? Uh, well, for sure. There's, it's not going to be all SaaS. Like Fold, for instance, they're like a they're you know a payments company so they'll make money on a uh, like a take rate of um of the gmv or like the gross merchandise value flowing through their system um lightning labs itself is still you know they've got these products called loop and pool that those will likely be where they monetize that business those are clearly not SaaS businesses it's like a marketplace business um but I think there's going to be a lot, like if I had to squint and guess what the crazy new potential business models would be, um, I'm starting to see this, this is super early, but basically um, there's this way of earning yield on Bitcoin where you would lock Bitcoin up in the Lightning Network into a node that is highly connected. And then that node rents out its liquidity through something like um, the pool, Lightning Labs pool marketplace. So now you have like a riskless way of earning yield on your Bitcoin through the Lightning Network. And um, people, you know, everybody, like so many people are hodlers anyway. What better way to hodl than to like use it to enrich the Lightning Network, which man like helps Bitcoin propagate further. And you earn, you earn fee, you earn like more Bitcoin on it. Sounds pretty good to me. Um, so that's, in terms of, it's not it's actually not a different business model it's still like a gmv take rate kind of thing but it's like a unique use of bitcoin itself to generate yield that could fund a business model right interesting okay so yeah it seems like there's 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 parallels to all these business models in traditional or web 2 or whatever you want to call it in that world right we have subscriptions we have uh, take rates we have yield we have banks we have a lot of these building blocks are already, um, it, they already work and we already know they work, but I guess it's just applying it to Bitcoin businesses. Um, one other interesting one that's just coming out now, it's Stacker News publicly shares a lot of their, their metrics and, and ideas and stuff like that. And one thing they're working on is giving yield to all users through their job board. So as they earn revenue, it gets dispersed to all the different users of Stacker News on a like recurring basis, and it is in proportion to your reputation on the site. So if you're an active user and if you're just you're constantly upvoting things that the rest of the community is also upvoting, and you're like recognized as like a trusted source, you get a larger share of that yield, which I just find fascinating. I feel like this this is just like a a totally new way to monetize a community and to get people on board. Um, I wonder, do, like, do you think this idea of earning yield has uh, and the ability to like get people excited and, and rush into Lightning in the same way that they've, you know, rushed into other <laughs> DeFi projects and things that promise yield in the crypto space? 
Yeah, you know, you touched on something I think is a big um, blind spot is probably not the right word, but uh, advantage that the Ethereum ecosystem has had with their, how easy it is to create tokens and do ICOs is that um, it creates so many owners. Everybody who has one of these tokens is a part owner in that project. And uh, if those projects can um, design their token economics such that their users earn more tokens or something like that, then it's sort of self-fulfilling. Like the users are going to want to use the thing more. And you've seen some cool stuff with um, uh, vampire attacks where you have one project that's open source that doesn't have a token. And then another project just copies it but introduces a token and pays the users in that token to use the thing. And then the usage just, just like instantly migrates over from one to the next. Um, so... Yeah. Yes, TLDR is that the ability to get creative around ownership is extremely powerful. And if we can figure out a way to do that uh, in Bitcoin, that would be huge. Uh, it sounds like Stacker News is, is onto it there. Um, they're just using the pro, it's basically like a dividend. I, it sounds like it, you know, they're getting revenue and then they're distributing the revenue out to the, um, the uh, yeah. community. So yeah, those types of things are super interesting. Yeah, part of me starts to wonder if that if, if there's a potential to do like a vampire attack on Facebook or on Twitter in that same way where you build up this new community and it, as you, if you join, you earn the revenue that that community generates in Bitcoin and it doesn't have to introduce another token um, and you, you still have full ownership of it. Cause like, like Stacker News isn't even taking a cut on theirs right now. It's a hundred percent, every dollar that flows in or every sat that flows in goes blasts out to all the users um but i guess it's just a it's a longer time frame it's not like you're getting an airdrop of a bunch of tokens on day one it's like you're showing proof that you're a valuable member of a community and i wonder like i i kind of think that this is going to be a tool that that we can use to disrupt existing social platforms do you do you you in the same way yeah well so there's the there was that um uh, infamous project BitTorrent that got pretty close to what you're describing. I don't know if you followed that one, but basically it would um, they create they like automatically created social profiles for everybody based on their Twitter, and then as soon as you claimed it, you would get a bunch of like Bit um, Cloud. Oh, that tokens. wasn't BitTorrent. That was or, uh, bit, sorry, BitCloud, BitCloud, not BitTorrent. BitCloud, yeah, that's yeah, right. um, yeah, BitCloud. And uh, but I think the issue was because they had their own token, it 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 falls victim to all the issues with fiat money, which is like humans were controlling the supply of the token. They can mess with the economics as much as they say, like, you know, we're going to, we're going to publish our token policy and not tamper with it. Like you can't trust it in the same way that you can trust Bitcoin, but on the downside, you can't just, it, you can't just print Bitcoins and motivate people with Bitcoins that you just invented out of thin air. So the ICO platforms have a, better bootstrap mechanism because they could just invent their tokens. Um, but it's not a hard money. You know, Bitcoin is a hard money. And um, that's kind of the challenge. It's Again, it comes back to this like low time preference, build it right, take your time versus like um, uh, high time preference and you're kind of like get rich quick. I almost think of Bitcoin as like protein and some of the other projects as sugar. Like you get this like sugar rush, you can go really fast. But like, is it sustainable? I don't know. Um, but That's a good I, I, I hope we can figure out for Bitcoin um, some ways to emulate some of those things into these other into these Bitcoin projects. Mm -hmm.